In this video, we're filtering our product images so only the selected variants are shown. You may have seen a previous video tutorial from us with this customization, but many of you have commented that it's not working on the newer versions of Dawn. So in this video, we've included a fix so that it's compatible with versions 14 and 15 of Dawn and the other free Shopify themes. Now, if this is the first time you're seeing this customization from us, don't click away. I'll be giving a quick demo of what the customization looks like in just a second, so you know what we're talking about. But with this change, your customers can quickly see the images related to the variants they're interested in without them getting lost in the gallery of other unrelated variant images. And that could mean a 33% boost in sales. So for example, if you are getting a 3% conversion rate or three sales per 100 visitors, by adding just one more sale per 100 visitors, that would actually mean 33% increase in the actual conversion rate. So if you're looking for more actionable advice on how to increase the conversion rates on your store, then we're actually offering a free personalized action plan for you guys. You just need to fill out a quick 30 second form on our website, head over to theprompted.co slash free action plan. We won't actually be able to respond to everyone, but if we think we can help, then we'll get back to you. Otherwise, if you want to hire us for some personalized help, then head over to theprompted.co slash hire us and book a call with us. I'll share all the links in the description below. All right. Let's filter our product images to only show those related to the selected variant. Okay, so let's first look at what the customization does. After we do that, we're going to look at the options you have to control how the images are grouped. And then finally, we'll get into how you can actually add this to your store. So what we're looking at here is our demo store. And you can see that we've selected the black color variant and only black images are shown. But if we click blue, then you've got the blue images shown, green will show the green images, red will show the red images, and so on. And if we also click into the modal, you'll see here that only the red images are shown here, uh, only the blue ones are shown, so it filters it in here as well. But if you actually go to the product, then we've got all these different images um, in the product. So what we're doing here is we're filtering them by variant so that we're only showing the relevant images. This way, we're not getting lost in all of the other images and we can uh, have a better sense of what each variant looks like without seeing all those other images. Now we can head over to the uh, theme editor. And so if we go into the product information, default product, uh, we have this new section here of settings. Um, and so what we have here is uh, a way to control how we're going to group our images. We have three options. So the first is using a meta field, uh, and then we have a file name and alt text. So I'll just quickly go over uh, what each one of these are. So with the meta field, uh, we can go to the product. So this is our product that we're looking at. And if you scroll to the bottom, we have this meta field here called variant images grouping list. And so what we've done is uh, we've created a meta object. Um, and then we can place these meta objects in here. So we can actually see all these different options here, um, but the ones that are related to this product is uh, the ones we've selected right here. Um, and let's go into one of these actually. So this is the meta object. And you can see here, what we've done is we have uh, a number of variants selected, which are all the black uh, variants, which is, let's say the black variants right here. So black, extra small, all the way to 3XL. And, and that's what we have here. And then we also have selected the images. So these are the four images that are related to this product. And you can see here, there's four images. And so by identifying which variants should show which images, this is how we're actually grouping them together by assigning it into our product. And so this is a really nice way of doing it because what you can actually you actually have the ability to sort of drag and drop, right? So if we select our variants, we can use the uh, default Shopify GUI to select all of our different variants. Right? We can just, we can check and uncheck the ones that we want, right? So we can check this one, done. And then we've easily added it into here. We can just remove that. And similarly with our images, we can quickly just go through our files and select the ones that are related. Um, and then add it to our uh, meta object. So I really like this method. It's just using the uh, already available Shopify GUI elements to uh, click and select the relevant variants and images. Okay, so the next method that we have is this file name method. And so with that comes uh, 
the need to split the file into different components using a delimiter. And so here we have a double underscore as our delimiter. Um, you can change this to whatever you want, which is why it's a setting. Uh, but what we can do is we go back to our products and you can see here, each one of these images has a file name. And then in that file name, it has a certain format, right? And so you can see here where we've got t-shirt, double underscore black, double underscore folded. And so what we've done here is we've delimited the file name into three parts, right? So first is something, right? In this case, it's whatever this product category is. Next is the color, which is actually our variant. And the final thing is uh, just some description. So, so here we have black in the second position and it's separated by a double underscore. And so here, what we can do is we can select file name and we can say the variant name position is actually in the second position. So let's save that. And then if we refresh our page, we're going to see that this is still filtering properly. Now, if I actually change this to, uh, to one and save, then now we're looking at the first part of this file, right? Which is not matching the variant names. And so if I actually refresh this, it's gonna just show everything, right? Because these, this second position here is supposed to match the actual, uh, one of the variant titles right here. In this case, it's black. If we go to a different one, it'll say green, right? And so this image should line up with the green variant. Uh, and so that's how we can map those two together. Similarly, we've got this alt text method. So the alt text also uses the split delimiter. Um, so in this case, let's go back to our image and we can see here, this is the alt text. And so the alt text, you can uh, make it however you want. Uh, but uh, in this case, we've actually delimited it with a star or an asterisk. And so what we can do is we can change this to an asterisk. The other thing that we have in here is we've placed the variant name in the third position. So we can change this to the third position. We'll save and refresh. And you can see here, uh, sorry, let's just uh, refresh again. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't actually change it to alt text, which is why that wasn't working. So let's uh, update that alt text, right? If it was file name, it's supposed to be the double underscore uh, with alt text. Here we have this asterisk. So let's just refresh that again. And there we go, now it's working. So we have these three methods here, um, meta field, file name, alt text. Uh, now there might be one reason or another that you wanna use each one of these. The meta field option is more user friendly. So I would, um, say start with this one because I think it's the best one to use. Uh, but some of you have mentioned that you have really large product catalogs or lots of images. And so you want some way to do things in bulk. And that's where the file name and alt text method comes in handy. So with the file name, you could use an external uh, bulk file name editing tool so that when you upload all your file names to Shopify, then you can uh, have, the, have a, a specific format that of your choosing and just delimit it with the variant name in there so that you don't have to go and create all of these meta objects and connect all these meta fields um, because it does get a little bit cumbersome if you have you know, hundreds or thousands of products. Uh, same thing with alt text. Uh, this one is another method that maybe you've already uploaded all of your images and you don't have to re-upload them or change all those file names. Then you can update the alt text of all of your images uh, similarly with a format of your choosing and delimit it in whichever way you want. So we've got lots of options here. Uh, you can see here that we can filter images uh, and you can choose which way you want to do it. So if this all looks really good to you and you want to add this to your store, then uh, let's do that now. Okay, so we're in our themes area of our store. And like I mentioned previously, we're making an update to our customization so that it's compatible with version 14 and 15 of Dawn and the other free Shopify themes. Uh, so step one is actually to follow the previous video. Uh, but before you go there, um, just know that you're gonna follow most of the steps until you get to the global.js file. So once you get there, don't make the changes from the previous video. You're gonna come here and make the final changes with global.js um, here in this video. Um, now, version 14 and 15 are actually different changes. 
So what I'll do is I'll first run through version 14, what updates you need on the global.js file there. And then afterwards, I'll show you version 15 and what updates we need to make uh, for, for there. Otherwise, the steps are pretty much the same as the previous version, which is why uh, we're not going to re go over all those steps again. Uh, you can see all those steps in the previous video, which was for version 13. And then uh, just that last little bit we're going to cover here in this video. OK, so you can go over there now uh, and add those steps in. And um, when you're done, just come back. OK, so I'm going to assume you're back now, uh, whether it's because you have just finished implementing the previous video, or you actually did it previously and you're waiting for the fix. Um, well, here we are. So um, here we have version 14 um, of our uh, of Dawn. We've gotten into the point where we're about to update the global.js file, uh, and we're gonna do that now. So as usual, if you're gonna make any changes, make a duplicate first just to back it up in case anything goes wrong. You can always revert back more easily. Uh, but we've already done that here, so we're just going to edit code. And we're going to go into the global.js file. So um, this is the default uh, Dawn version 14 global.js file. And previously, we would update um, the, the update media method. Uh, and we're going to do something similar here, but uh, the placements are going to be a bit different. So let's first... Um, we're going to look for the render product info method. So right here, render product method uh, info. And you're going to see here that we actually have update media being called here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, take our code and just place our code underneath here. Uh, and so this is going to call a new method we're about to add the update media grouping method. We're just going to place it right under this uh, dot update media. Next, we're going to uh, come to the bottom of this method, right? So this is where render product info ends. And we're just going to create a little bit of space and paste our update media grouping uh, method into there. So now it's uh, being called uh, in the render product info method. Uh, and so that's essentially it. We can just save. And if we uh, preview our store, and we're going to go to our V2 product, you can see here that it's now all working. So that's the version 14 update. It's a very small change compared to before, but now we have it working with, uh, with version 14. So now, why don't we go and do version 15? So uh, here we have uh, version 15 of our store. We're going to publish this. And again, this is the uh, this is a version of the theme where we've gone up to the point where we need to update global.js, uh, but we haven't done that change yet. And so that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, as usual, uh, make a copy of your store uh, of your theme in case you haven't, so you can revert back. We've already done that, so let's hop in. Uh, so we're editing, editing code. And here you can actually see we have two files open. So global.js, this is the, uh, the default global.js of Dawn version 15. Uh, and we also have the product info.js file, which in its right now is in its default state. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to actually be editing product info.js, not global.js, because in Dawn 15, they've actually changed how the variant, uh, variant changes are being handled on the, in the JavaScript. So previously, we, that was all being handled in global.js. Now it's been moved to product info.js. So um, you can actually see the update media method has been moved into product info.js. So you can find it in here, um, right there. But in global.js, if we look for it, uh, we can't find it. So we're actually going to leave global.js alone, and we're going to actually make our changes in update media. Uh, sorry, in product info.js. And so um, what we can do first is we can uh, paste in our method. So if this is update media, let's just go right underneath there and paste our method. It's different than the version 14 method, 
uh, we use the same name, but it's uh, the structure is different. Um, and we place it in there. And then next, we're going to um, go to where we actually call update media. So right here. So in the handle update product info uh, method, this is where we're calling the update media method. And we're going to put a little space underneath here. And we are going to make a call to our method right here, this uh, update media grouping. Uh, and then we can save. And again, if we preview our store and we uh, go to V2, we can see here that the images are filtering. Now, if this is not happening for you, uh, just make sure that you actually turn it on first. So if we go to your customized theme and go to product info and scroll down here, we have this section here, right? So make sure this is checked to turn on the feature. Uh, and then if it's still not working, you're going to have to double check uh, your, your meta fields to make sure you're choosing the right product variants, you're choosing the right images. Uh, and same thing with the file names, make sure the format's correct, make sure the delimiter is correct, make sure this, the name position is correct. Uh, and, and then it should all work. Um, so that's true for either version 14 or 15, but that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do to filter your product images by the selected variant. So let me know in the comments below if you found this tutorial helpful. And another reminder, if you want a free personalized action plan to increase your conversions, or you want to hire us for personalized help, then just check out theprompted.co. Uh, all of the links will be in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.